Hi there and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. This video is going to be a walkthrough of a range of different maths questions. So if you are new here, then click subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest videos. So do you love the biology theory, but struggle with the maths? Do the maths questions take you ages and then you just see they're only worth one or two marks? And do you look at the maths questions and have no idea where to start? Now, if so, that is exactly what I was like. Maths does not come to me naturally. But after having taught biology with this high demand of maths in for over 10 years now, I have come to learn the different patterns and I've got my head around the maths. But what I hope it does mean is I'm able to teach it in a way that people that don't find maths naturally easy can understand it because it's the way that I learnt it. So the types of questions that are going to come up in this video are magnification, percentages, standard form ratios and appropriate units. Now your time is precious, I know that, so I'll put timestamps at the bottom so you can go to whichever question fits the needs that you most need to practice. So question one, this covers some standard form and percentages. We've got the normal range of blood hydrogen ion concentration is 3.55 times 10 to the minus 8 ranging to 4.47 times 10 to the minus 8 moles per decimeter cubed. People with too high a concentration of hydrogen ions or H plus in their blood often need treatment for that. Now one patient was found to have a blood hydrogen ion concentration of 1.82 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per decimeter cubed. So what you have to do is calculate the minimum percentage decrease required to bring the patient's blood hydrogen ion concentration within the normal range. So the first thing is you have to get your head around this standard form and realize that if these are all times 10 to the minus eight and the patient is 10 to the minus seven, this is actually a bigger value than both of those. So when you're told that their hydrogen ion concentration is outside of the range, it's too high. And we need to work out the minimum percentage decrease to bring it within the normal range. So we need to work out, first of all, what is the difference between the upper end of the range and their value? Let's work out what is the raw difference. Then we work out what that is as a percentage. So that's what I've got here. We've got the patient's value minus the top end of the range to work out what is the actual difference. And then for percentage decrease, you work out what the difference is, divide it by your original. And in this case, the original is the patient's value. Now, just another way to show this, um, if maybe the standard form, you're finding it hard to get your head around that it is a smaller value. Uh, I've just put it in with all of the zeros. So you can actually see that this is a bigger number than this one, because there are fewer zeros. Um, and then that's what our raw difference is. Now that as standard form is 1.373 times 10 to the minus 7 divided by the original and we get an answer of 75.4%. Now the reason I put the minus in brackets is uh, because I've told you in the question it's a decrease so we know it would be a negative value. So that's question number one. Two marks if you get the percentage correct. Um, if you manage to get the raw difference then you'd get one mark for that. Question two, appropriate units and ratios. So when a patient's blood is being filtered through a dialysis machine, the blood flows through at a rate of 180 centimeters cubed per minute. If the blood was flowing through the machine for four hours, what would be the total volume which passed through the machine? And they've specified you have to give your answer in decimeters cubed. So that is my first step, because I can see here that when we have been given a volume, 180, it's a centimetres cubed. So first of all, let's convert to decimetres cubed. And to go from centimetres to decimetres cubed, you would need to divide by 1,000. So we have 0 0.18 decimetres cubed. Now the next thing is, um, we've been told that that is the volume of blood per minute. However, the machine is running for four hours. So I'm also going to do another conversion here. I'm going to convert the minutes to hours. So we know that we have 0.18 decimeters cubed in one minute. To work out how many um, we'd have in an hour, we multiply by 60. Because if that's for one minute, 
60 minutes in an hour times it by 60. So we now know that in one hour, the volume of blood passing through the machine is 10.8 decimeters cubed. However, we have four hours. So the final step is to multiply that answer by four. And we get 43.2 decimeters cubed. Question three on ratios here. So we've been told that when mitochondrial DNA, and they're abbreviating that to mtDNA, replicates, there is a delay between when the first and the second strand of DNA actually replicates. And the replication of the second strand only starts after two thirds of the first strand have been copied. We're then told that a piece of this mitochondrial DNA is 21,000 base pairs long, and it's replicated at a rate or speed of 50 nucleotides per second. So for one mark, you have to tick the box that shows how long it would take to copy this mitochondrial DNA. So first of all, let's get our head around then this two thirds of the way through, it starts copying. And that was actually my first step when I did this. We're told that the second strand doesn't start replicating until you're two thirds of the way through. So I wanted to work out, well, what is that as um, a distance in terms of base pairs? So I divided the 21,000 by three. So we know that one third is 7,000, two thirds is 14,000. So only when 14,000 bases have been copied on strand one, will the second strand start to replicate. So we need to know then, what is the time taken for the first two thirds of that first strand to replicate? And we're told that the rate is 50 nucleotides per second. So we need to divide 14,000 by 50, and that is 280. So that would be 280 seconds. And that is how long the replication is occurring before the second strand even starts to replicate. So only after 280 seconds does the second strand start to replicate. And the second strand is also 21,000 base pairs long. So to work out how long that second strand will take to replicate, again, we divide it by 50. 21,000 divided by 50 is 420 seconds. So the final step then is adding those together because it's 280 seconds before the second strand even begins and then that has to fully replicate. So that is why the answer would be 700 seconds. Right, question four is on standard form and you're asked to tick the box that shows um, the correct sequence for the order of magnitude. Now, at first glance, that looks pretty overwhelming. But the main thing to notice, if you have a quick look through, is it's the same five values used over and over in different orders. So the first step would be convert all of them to the same units. So I'm converting them all to meters. Now, you could put that as standard form. Um, in the state of an exam rushing, I actually just calculated it by writing it out, moving the number of decimal places, and then counting the zeros. You may well do that very differently. As I said at the start, my brain is not naturally mathematical, so this is just the way it works for me. It might be different for you, and that is fine as long as you get to the correct answer in the end. I've then put in brackets just to see how many zeros it is. Now from that, I can straight away see the order of magnitude. Um, it's almost in the correct order there already. I just need to swap those two around. So the correct order would be 20 nanometers, 0.2 micrometers, 0.2 times 10 to the minus 5 meters, 2 times 10 to the minus 2 millimeters. And that is actually our final row just here. Question 5, percentages and ratios. So the volume of a plant cell is 16,000 micrometers cubed, and the volume of all the chloroplasts in that cell is 295.5 micrometers cubed. The volume of all the mitochondria and the chloroplasts in the cell is 38.9% of the volume of the plant cell. So we need to use all of that information to calculate the volume of all the mitochondria. So the first thing I would do is actually just pull out all of that key information so I can see a bit more clearly what I'm working with. So I've got the plant cell volume, chloroplast volume, and then the fact that the mitochondria and chloroplasts combined is 38.9% of the volume. 
So my first step is actually working out then what is 38.9% of the volume. So 38.9% would be um, 0.389 times 16,000. And that gives us 6,224 micrometers cubed. Now that gives us the volume of the mitochondria and chloroplasts combined. We know that this is the volume of the chloroplasts, so we just need to take that away to get our volume of mitochondria. So it's 5,928.5 micrometers cubed. So question six, magnification. And the drawing shows an electron micrograph of a section three part of an alveolus from the lung. We've got cell A and cell B, but they actually tell us that cell A is a human red blood cell. So the diameter of the human red blood cell is actually seven micrometers, and we have to calculate the magnification showing our working. So the formula is I am, that's how I remember it, which is image equals actual times magnification. Now we need to rearrange that formula to make magnification the subject. So magnification is image divided by the actual. And the only piece of information we have here is the actual size is seven micrometers. We're working out the magnification. So that means to get the image size, you would have to use your ruler and measure the diameter of cell A. Now, if you have actually downloaded these questions from MissEstrick.com, you might have printed these off at different scales. So you might have printed it off slightly shrunken down. Now, when I measured this, it came to 63 millimeters, but you may have got a slightly different value for that. So we've now got 63 millimeters and our actual is seven micrometers. Now, before we put that into the formula, we need to convert them to be in the same units. So I'm going to convert the 63 millimetres to micrometres, and that would be times in it by a thousand, because micrometres are a thousand times smaller, so a thousand of the micro 1,000 micrometres fit into one millimetre. So times by a thousand, and we've got 63,000 micrometres as our image size. So 63,000 divided by seven gives us a magnification of 9,000. And that's it for part one of the maths questions. I hope you have found it helpful. As I said, maths was never my strong point, but that hopefully gives you an idea of how my brain got to those questions, how to work them out, and I really hope that helped you. If it did, please give it a thumbs up.